హాయ్ వియర్స్ దిస్ ఈజ్ జే స్వామి అసిస్టెంట్ ప్రొఫెసర్ ఆఫ్ జువాలజీ టుడే వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు డిస్కస్ ది ప్రాన్ కల్చర్ అండర్ ది ప్రాన్ కల్చర్ విల్ డిస్కస్ ఇంట్రొడక్షన్ అబౌట్ ది ప్రాన్ కల్చర్ ద కల్టివేబుల్ ప్రాన్స్ అండ్ దర్ టైప్స్ ప్రాన్ కల్చర్ టెక్నాలజీ అండర్ దిస్ సైట్ సెలెక్షన్ ఫర్ పాండ్ కన్స్ట్రక్షన్ క్లైమేట్ కండిషన్స్ టోపోగ్రఫీ ఆఫ్ ది ల్యాండ్ సాయిల్ కండిషన్ వాటర్ సప్లై అట్ ద సైట్ పాండ్ డిజైన్ అండ్ కన్స్ట్రక్షన్ డైక్స్ అండ్ ది డ్రైనేజ్ ఆఫ్ ది ప్యాండ్ ప్రొడక్షన్ సిస్టమ్ ఫర్టిలైజేషన్ డెవలప్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ లార్వే ఫుడ్ అండ్ ఫీడింగ్ హ్యాబిట్స్ ఆఫ్ ది ప్రాన్స్ ప్రాన్ హార్వెస్టింగ్ టెక్నిక్స్ అండ్ ఫైనల్లీ ది డిసీజ్ కంట్రోల్ హౌ టు కంట్రోల్ ది డిసీజెస్ కమ్ టు ది ఇంట్రొడక్టరీ పార్ట్ నవేడేస్ ప్రాన్ కల్చర్ హెస్ బికమ్ ఏ బిజినెస్ డ్యూ టు ద ఓవర్ హ్యూమన్ కన్జంప్షన్ ఆఫ్ ది ప్రాన్స్ అండ్ the contribution of india for worldwide prawn production is 15% 15% contributed by india worldwide prawn production and the contribution of marine prawn from india it is of about 20% and here in worldwide if we compare all the countries and their productions india stood first followed by china second place and third place occupied by the thailand countries and there are 150 species which are usually cultured all over the world and about 150 apart from the 150 40 species are they are belongs to macrobrachium genus macrobrachium genus that is freshwater prawns in india especially macrobrachium rosenbergi which is commonly called as the joint freshwater prawn it has the highest export potential and it is cultivated in 4 million hectares 4 million hectares it is being cultivated and it has a highest export potential and thereby we will get more and more amount of foreign exchange within the country in india maharashtra is in the first place by contributing 50% of production whereas kerala in the second place 32% of production and andhra pradesh stood in third position it contributes of about 6% of the all over production of prawns in india and all these prawns they are exported as deep frozen prawns or canned food or dried prawns also in the powder form they will be exported to other countries here our uh, telangana state government telangana state agriculture and fisheries ministry they launched a pilot project on six major reservoirs of the prawn culture so number one first project is koil sagar project mahabub nagar singuru project sangareddy ganpur project jay shankar bhopalpalli district vaira kammam district kadem reservoir adilabad district and lower monair dam from the karimnagar district so there is a they launched a pilot project of the prawn culture especially the gadwal of erstwhile mabunar district there is a rich catchment area water catchment area from both the rivers krishna and tungabhadra and the prawn farmers fish farmers what they will do they fill the tanks from the water resources of jurala project 
and the Nettempadu project. Zurala and Nettempadu projects are the major source of the water of the prawn farmers. The water which is released from these two projects they uh, used to fill the prawn tanks, prawn ponds. And due to the availability of more water due to the completion of all the irrigation projects, the parched land of the Gadwal region they have transformed into the prawn ponds due to the more income and due to the more uh, profit. Here the cultivable prawns are categorized into three groups namely pinnoid prawns, non-pinnoid prawns and the palaemonids. We will see one by one see the pinnoid prawns the best examples are Peneus monodon which is commonly called as tiger prawn, Peneus indicus, white prawn, Metapeneus monociras, Metapeneus dobsoni, Metapeneus brevicarnis, it is known as the yellow prawn, Metapeneus affinis which is commonly called as the jingo prawn and Parapeneus species are the best examples of the pinnoid prawns. So, see the images of all these prawns. This is a Peneus monodon tiger prawn due to the horizontal stripes over the surface of the body that uh, leads to the naming of the tiger prawn. Then, this is the Peneus indicus due to its body color, it is called as the white prawn. This is Metapeneus monociras. This is Metapeneus dobsoni. This is Metapeneus. These all are the Metapeneus brevicornis, which are looking light yellow in color, yellow prawns. Followed by Metapeneus affinis, it is called as the Zinga prawn. And finally, Parapeneus species. These all are from the Pinnoid group, Pinnoid prawns. Then coming to the non Pinnoid prawns. Apart from these, the best examples are Pelimon tenupis, Pelimon styliferus, Hippolycinate encirostris, Acetis indicus, it is called as the paste shrimp. These are the examples of the non pinnoid prawn group. And see, this is the Pelimon tenupis, this is the life cycle of the Pelimon tenupis. Then Pelimon styliferus, it grows up to the 18 centimeters length. It can grow in brackish water and marine water. And Hippolycinate encirostris. This is a Hippolycinate encirostris. This is Acetis indicus. Acetis indicus. And come to the third group of prawns Pelimonids or Pelimonid prawns. The giant freshwater prawn, which is called as the Macrobrachium rosenbergi, followed by Macrobrachium malcolmsoni. These two are the uh, highly cultured species in freshwaters in India. Macrobrachium rude and Macrobrachium ide. These are the best examples of the Palaemonid family group. This is the Macrobrachium rosenbergi. This is Macrobrachium malcolmsoni and this is Macrobrachium rude and finally this is Macrobrachium ide. These are from the uh, Palaemonids family. If you observe the nutritional value of 100 grams of prawn flesh or prawn, prawn meat, it constitutes 20 grams of proteins. 1 gram of fat, fat is very very low, 280 milligrams of phosphorus, 16 grams of calcium and appropriate vitamins and it yields 90 kilocalories of energy for 100 grams of prawn meat. This is the nutrition value. Due to the highest nutrition value and there is a huge demand for the prawns.
see the some specialties of the prawns if you observe the pineus monodon the tiger shrimp it is highly preferred species because of its large size and it can adapt to different kinds of environmental conditions where actually you are going to uh, grow them and they have the high nutritive value and there is a great demand for these tiger uh, tiger shrimps in the international market and thereby we may get more and more foreign exchange here this is a scampi joint freshwater prawn macrobrachium rosenbergi it is widely distributed southeast asia and as well as india and it is mostly suitable for culture due to its fast growth rate and due to the tolerance to wide range of temperature and salinity of the aquatic environment they are highly uh, cultured in india and southeast asia the countries of southeast asia and it is less cannibalistic cannibalism is the eating of own species eating of own species the cannibalism it is a general phenomena in the crustacea here these are less cannibalistic the special feature of the macrobrachium rosenberg is less cannibalistic and we can identify the larvae of macrobrachium rosenberg or scampi the larvae upon their carapace they have 1 to 8 horizontal lines 1 to 8 horizontal lines on the carapace carapace is the dorsal shield of the prawns otherwise the larvae of prawns now here the crustaceans and other most of the arthropods they undergo egg diesis otherwise we can also call them as the molting so that is shedding of periodical shedding of the exoskeleton of arthropods is known as the molting otherwise egg diesis process the hormone which is responsible for the egg diesis is known as egg diesone due to the molting here there will be increase in size due to the periodical shedding of exoskeleton there is a uh, gradual increase of the size of the animal takes place then come to the prawn culture in general what we will do so there are the uh, in aquatic water bodies in the natural resources there are different larval forms are available we will uh, transport them to different cultural fields then rear them and harvest them or capture them after they attain market size and we will sell in market or marketing these are the major steps in the prawn culture come to the whenever if you want to construct a prawn pond then we have to take some measures first one is the site selection for pond construction then under the site selection we will see we will take care of certain things that the we have to see the climate conditions of the site particular site where actually we going to uh, construct a prawn pond and we have to observe the topography of the land and we have to see the soil conditions like the ph and other components which are present in the soil and kind of soil so then we have to take care about the water supply power supply and whether there is a appropriate road and transport system we should uh, concerned with and there should be the storage sets so we will take into consideration all these factors and we will select the site for the construction of prawn pond see one by one this is the climatic condition generally warm climate or tropical subtropical climate is most suitable whenever you want to go for the warm climate if the culture period of the prawn is very short if the culture period is short if you culture for 2 months 3 months then you can go for the warm climate you can construct the pond in warm climate 
if the culture period is too long 6 months 8 months then you have to construct the prawn pond in the tropical either in the tropical region or in the subtropical climates subtropical regions so these two regions tropical and subtropical regions are most suitable for the prawn culture whenever you going for the uh, long period prawn culturing and not only these two warm climate tropical and subtropical climates but also the rainfall of that region evaporation of water due to the uh, heat and availability of the sunlight in that region and the wind speed they also play a critical role in the uh, prawn pond construction then come to the topography of the land the site must be flat or gently sloped so as we are seeing in the background of this slide site must be flat or gently sloped and usually low lying lands waterlogged areas salinity and alkalinity affected areas they could be effectively used for the construction of the prawn pond this is the topography requirement coming to the soil condition generally we use clay loam or sandy loam soils for the construction of prawn pond they are very suitable for the pond and if it is sandy loam there should be 60 percent of sand and 40 percent of silt and this land should hold retains of about 85 percent of water the land should have the retention capacity it has to uh, capture it has to hold 85 percent of water and the constituents of the soil should be the organic carbon 1 to 1.5 percent phosphorus 3 to 7 milligrams of 100 gram soil nitrogen 25 to 50 mg uh, per 100 grams of soil potassium that should contribute 1 to 2 percent and we should not forget that where the actually there are mangroves or acid sulfate soils we should not go for the construction of the pond they are not at all suitable in order to construct the pond we should take care and we should remember that where actually there is a mangrove land otherwise acid sulfate soils are there we should not select them they are not suitable for the construction of the prawn ponds coming to the next parameter is the water supply then we have to see where actually we are constructing the prawn tank or prawn pond that should have that region should have the pollution free water supply first thing and there should be the abundant and good quality of water then the pH of water should be 7 to 8.5 7 to 8.5 and the temperature in between 25 to 32 degrees Celsius and the dissolved oxygen should be 5 to 7 parts per million whenever it is 5 to 7 the saturation rate of the oxygen it is more than 75 percent and whenever you fill the prawn pond or prawn tank okay the water should be visible like light green in color that should be preferable for the culturing of the prawns and coming to the second step that is a pond design and construction pond design and construction of the pond so this is the uh, general model for the prawn pond and if you observe no unique design for the construction of the prawn pond so there will be a difference based upon the needs and necessities of the prawn farmers they design themselves but if you construct the prawn pond in one hectare area it is widely acceptable size why because the size may be vary, vary from half hectare to five hectares some of them they construct in two hectares three hectares four hectares and some of them go for the uh, half hectare 
or 5 hectares. So this is widely acceptable size. 1 hectare uh, construction area is widely accepted size. And if you construct the uh, pond in the square form and you can also construct the pond in the rectangular form, rectangular shape. Then what is the benefit of these two? If you construct it in the square form, okay, square, square plan form, then thereby it is more economical. It is more economic structure. And if you see the rectangular form, then what happens? It is more suitable for the harvesting. Then you have to uh, decide, you have to determine whether you want to go for the uh, square form, otherwise the rectangular form of prawn. Then pond should hold 1.5 to 2 meters of water inside the pond. That is the capacity. Coming to the pond preparation. So before constructing the prawn, before introducing of the uh, seed of prawn, what we have to do? Pond preparation. First of all, we have to remove the water and we have to dry the pond. And after drying, the bottom of the pond is exposed to sunlight for one week, seven days. If it is not possible to dry, then go for the addition of Mahua oil cake or urea along with bleaching powder. They should be added to remove the predatory fish. If the fish are grown in the aquatic pond, that is a prawn pond, it is problematic thing. They will all uh, eat the prawns. So that in order to remove the predatory fish, we have to add Mahua oil cake or urea along with bleaching powder and liming should be done at the rate of 200 kgs 2 quintas of lime calcium oxide calcium hydroxide per hectare area liming 200 kg per hectare area so if there are disturbances and difference in the ph of soil you can reduce the amount of uh, calcium oxide otherwise you, you may uh, enhance the liming capacity then coming to the next one you can add you have to add cow dung otherwise raw cattle dung 200 kg per acre not hectare acre and you have to add urea 10 kg single superphosphate ssp 15 kg because in order to grow them in order to grow uh, algae otherwise the planktons we have to use these fertilizers urea and ssp and whenever you want to fill the tank then the water should be filtered thoroughly properly filtered and fill the tank up to four feet so these are the uh, preparation of the pond for the prawn culture and the dikes dikes are like this you have to go for the construction of the dikes so this this is the pond area and the ridge around the pond is known as the dike so this is a basic plan of the prawn pond so it is somewhat not flat it is somewhat slope then see the conditions bottom should be sloped towards the drainage point it should not be flat always it should be sloped and if you construct the dike with earth or soil and that may be with or without lining is economical so low cost effective it should be constructed one meter height above the water level in order to prevent the flooding during the rainy season and slope not less than 1 is one to 1.5 is used in the sandy soil and whereas in the clay soils it should be 1 is to 1 and shallow slope what is the use of the shallow slopes is that encourage the growth of benthic algae benthic algae that will impair quality of water it encourages the uh, quality of 
it uh, it impairs the quality of water if there is a shallow slope and some of the farmers they construct wide dikes wide dikes in order to provide space for the road or storage electricity and in order to set up aerators some of them they construct the wide dikes as well and see the drainage drainage canal here if you observe the diagram this is a slope so it is up to the uh, tank and the drainage should be drainage pump should be below 50 centimeters than the water bottom 50 centimeters okay and thereby whenever you want to replace the water you have to remove the water through the drainage pump drainage canal or if at all if you want to harvest them by draining the pond you have to uh, remove the water through the drainage canal it should be positioned not less than 50 centimeters below the bottom of the prawn tank and coming to the production system so here the buried females so buried females means the females with eggs the females with eggs at their abdomen in the egg basket they are known as the buried females these all are the which we are observing in yellow color these all are the eggs those females with which carry eggs in their egg basket at the abdominal region they are known as the buried females that is the brooders then they are obtained from the natural resources like the ponds lakes rivers in the uh, beginning of the rainy season in the months of june and july and in tropical regions the buried females are available all over the year throughout the year they are available in the tropical regions but in uh, semi-tropical regions in other regions they are available only in the rainy season so during that time we will collect the buried females from the natural water resources and if you select fast growing buried female then that shows effect that shows positive effect on the weight of the prawn at the time of harvesting so we should select good quality uh, buried female otherwise faster growing buried female otherwise those which can resist disease we have to select them and coming to the fertilization here we are seeing the male and female prawns where they exhibit the sexual dimorphism the second walking leg of the males is larger and stronger when compared to the second walking leg of the female so they exhibit the sexual dimorphism and while we are going for the breeding the typical male and female ratio will be maintained and they allow to copulate with each other after the copulation external fertilization takes place and these eggs they are transferred to the brood chambers beneath the abdomen of the female and eggs are orange in color until they undergo the hatching okay just before the hatching they turn into gray black generally they are orange in color before hatching and just before hatching they turn into gray black and still the eggs are remain attached to the female during the embryological development and from the hatching of these eggs the free swimming zoea larva are produced the first larvae of the prawns first larvae of the prawns is the zoea and see the larval development the first stage is known as the zoea which lengthens of about 2 millimeters see small size 2 millimeters it go through of about 11 to 13 larval stages and finally it metamorphosed into an adult whenever it is metamorphosed into post larval form it becomes 8 mm 1 centimeter plus 3 mm 8 mm then in general 
16 days are required for the individual metamorphosis but whenever you are doing the club metamorphosis at a uh, at a more level at a large scale then it takes so much of time due to the environmental conditions but individually they metamorphosed in 16 days that is of about two weeks in order to uh, hatch the optimum temperature which is required for macrobrachium rosenbergi is 28 degrees to 31 degrees celsius the optimum temperature for hatching otherwise for the metamorphosis is 28 degrees to 31 degrees celsius if the temperature is 24 to 26 degrees celsius otherwise below that then they never undergo the metamorphosis if at all they undergo they will not grow well they will not grow well so these are the various larval stages see this is the zoea first larvae second third fourth form fifth stage sixth seventh eighth ninth tenth eleventh so here furthermore to twelfth to thirteenth afterwards it become an adult it is metamorphosed into an adult so here we have given larval stage up to the eleventh and the days which are required from larvae 1 from age 1 day 1 to of about 1 month 23 to 35 23 to 35 so what are the organs which are going to be formed discussed here finally it become adult then coming to the food and feeding habits of the prawns generally the food which is supplied to the prawns is uh, generally nauplius larvae of shrimp, cladocerans, rotifers, fish eggs, fish flesh, squid flesh, egg custard, uh, different kinds of worms and the commercial feeds. Quantity of food depend upon the utilization of the feed by the larvae. If the larvae utilize more food, we have to provide more food that they require more quantity of food so whenever there will be increased uh, quantity as the larva grows in size in age then they require increased quantity of food in general natural food is very good for the growth and health when you compare to the supplementary food so the supplementary feed or food includes agriculture and animal husbandry byproducts broken rice trash fish vegetable and animal feed mixed in the adequate proportions and they should be given in the pellet form and we have to take care that the food should be intact till the prawn consumes the food whenever you introduce the food it should be intact till the prawns that consume that food otherwise that will go waste because they feed only once in a day so that we should take care till the consumption of the uh, food by the prawns that should be intact in structure and rate of feeding depends on the age of prawns if the age is more they uh, eat more so this is a feed supplementary feed which we will supply in general and prawn harvesting Generally, for the harvesting, it requires 5 to 7 months of the introduction of this uh, prawn seed into the prawn tank. They attain market size after the rearing of 5 to 7 months. So, we can harvest them in two methods, culling or draining. Culling may be followed or draining may be followed. What is the culling, isolation or separation? Culling means separation. Culling is used to harvest larger prawns from the pond at the regular intervals as and when they attain a market size then we will remove them and we will market them sell them so whenever you remove some of the larger prawns then that enhances the density quickly because the smaller prawns they uh, attain larger size in order to 
uh, culling in order to separate them from the entire pond seen net that will be used and by throwing the seen net we will pull them throughout the pond and we will get the large sized prawns and another technique which is used for the harvesting of prawn is the draining we will remove the drain the pond we will remove the entire water from the pond so it should be done early morning to avoid the overheat so otherwise if there is a overheat the captured prawns they undergo decomposition otherwise they lose their quality and in order to uh, in the apart from the draining some of the farmers what they will do they construct a harvesting sump into which the water of the pond will be released okay that will be constructed outside the pond and in this sump all the prawns which are present in the uh, pond they will be accumulated then we will capture them and after harvesting careful handling to be done that ensures the good quality of the product good quality product then coming to the preservation of the prawns harvested prawn quickly killed by giving the temperature shock so generally they are uh, living in 27 to 32 degrees uh, celsius so if you dip the prawn in the iced water cool water then they will undergo death so this will be done that is temperature shock will be given in order to prevent the damage of the prawn and in order to improve the storage capacity of the prawn then harvested prawn should be iced and transported to cold storage or processing unit in less than 10 hours otherwise they may get decomposed otherwise they may lose their quality and prawns are quickly frozen at 10 degrees celsius temperature and they should be stored in 20 degrees celsius temperature and these are the nets which are used for the harvesting of the uh, prawns so this is the seen net that will be used for the pulling of the prawns from the pond and this is the harvesting sump so actually the pipe is from the bottom of the large uh, prawn pond so at the outside the farmer has constructed a sump harvesting sump so that is lined with the all nets so these are the accumulated prawns so this is the preservation of the prawns this image gives the information regarding preservation of the prawns with the eyes so these are the cold storage areas cold storage units where actually they are frozen and stored and finally come to the disease control these prawns are susceptible for different kinds of uh, diseases which are caused by bacteria virus fungi and parasites in order to overcome these problems by these different kinds of organisms the fish farm the prawn farmers what they'll do they use 200 parts per million of formaldehyde per day in order to protect the prawns from protozoan and fungal diseases otherwise 30 parts per million formalin may be used and there is a frequent water change after the 24 hours to overcome the diseases and there are disinfectant tanks so that is tanks are filled up the water and we will you add disinfectant and these larvae are shifted into the disinfected tanks after every 5 to 10 days and thereby so they protect from different kinds of diseases otherwise dip the larvae in malicite green 0.2 parts per million so the duration is 30 minutes if you dip them 30 minutes in the malicite green they overcome different kinds of diseases otherwise you can also dip them in uh, copper sulfate for 6 hours 
it is a recommended technique then antibiotics and sulfur drugs they protect the prawn from the filamentous bacteria so liming addition of lime calcium oxide calcium hydroxide it is a prophylactic measure to prevent the diseases and whenever if at all you use certain drugs or chemicals they should be uh, in the list of permitted drugs permitted drugs and the chemicals to be used to control the different kinds of diseases so this is the uh, thing about the disease control thank you thank you one and all